Hi, for today's CSS Secret Saturday, CSS Saturday Secrets, I'm going to show you how to customize the specificity of the rules that you're writing. This seems to be something that a lot of people want to use. So let's say this is a regular div. We have a div with a class. And we have another div with a class and an ID. For this demo, I'm going to start with the EQCSS. So let's give the div some styles. So here we can see that all of the div elements have that line background. If we were to write another element query here, for the class. Uh, let's set the background to pink. So now we see that the two divs with the class of class are getting that background. If in our CSS style sheet these rules were reversed, this rule actually takes precedence because it, it comes after it. So I'll get to explaining why that's the case later. But first, let's add another element query here for the ID. So here we have three element queries applying styles to these divs. Now the way that this works with EQCSS is each of these selectors that's given uh, matches elements in the page. These elements in the page are then assigned unique attributes. So here you can see um, this is data EQCSS 00. Um, this one's data EQCSS 01. Um, so these refer to the query and uh, which element uh, counts them as they match. So when we write this in our CSS style sheet, that's being replaced with an attribute selector. So even though the div, the class, and the ID all have different specificities. Um, they're all kind of being downgraded with this to an attribute selector. So normally the ID would overpower everything, but with just an attribute selector, uh, this one and this one kind of overwrite this value. So is there a way that you can customize the specificity of the rules that you're writing? And the answer is yes, and the secret is kind of also in um, attribute selectors as well. So if we add a second equal attribute selector, that makes this rule more specific than this one and this one. Since it's only matching those with an ID, uh, this rule takes precedence over these two just for this element, because that's the only one it applies to. Uh, if we were to kind of beef up this to the same level, you can see that because this comes after this ID one in the code, it was overpowering it. Uh, how could you make the ID stronger? Um, add another level. So if we were to add these levels, which kind of match what the selectors are, we could put these in any order and it wouldn't really matter. They're going to apply. So this gives you some flexibility. As you're authoring CSS, you can write a selector. You can then kind of pick relative to your other queries how specific you want these rules to be. And uh, you know maybe only certain properties need uh, the extra specificity. So perhaps you have uh, div this, and then you do. Uh, this, this, color, something else. But it's not going to work with that. But you can beef it up so it works. So I know it looks a little strange, but this is this already works with how EQCSS is set up. So anybody using EQCSS can begin customizing the specificity of their rules. Um, I'll just show you something else, the same technique in a plugin by itself. So I wrote this plugin last week called Respec, and it lets you kind of re-specify 
uh, the, the specificity of a rule. So you give it a selector to match elements in the document, you assign a specificity value, and then you include the CSS properties that you want to output as a rule. So you go through the document finding every tag that matches the selector, and for each of those tags, you assign an attribute which allows you to match it. For each level of specificity, you output one additional attribute, and then you rewrite the rule so that you have as many different attributes as levels of specificity require with the original rule, and you return that. So in practice, here we have the same three kind of divs. We've included the plugin, and then here in our dynamic style sheet, we have a rule for div. Uh, this one, we give it a specificity of three. And so right now, it's overpowering the class and the ID. Uh, if we were to bump this one up, you would see how changing the levels here is actually affecting the specificity of the rules. And to view those output on the page, I'm going to look in here, and you can see data respect div zero, and this one's repeated three times. Um, this one's more, and that one's only uh, here. So if we do zero, it'll just output one. That would give us a duplicate. So you can see it being output two times here. And then two here is uh, one, two, three being output. So you could actually write CSS this way. As long as you have attributes on the elements you want to select, um, you can kind of target them this way. I don't see any reason. If you had your HTML and you already knew the CSS you wanted to apply to it, you should be able to process it even server side. Read the HTML, match the elements, add the attributes into the HTML, and uh, output new CSS at those different specificity levels. Um, you should be able to do that server side before you even send it. Uh, I don't have a demo of that, but as far as I can tell, the same technique should work. So that's just a couple ways to get around specificity traps.